Welcome to the Buzz on Sports Science. On March 22, 1989, Clint Malarchuk's life was changed forever. As he says, it was the first time he should have died. It was a heated game between his team, the Buffalo Sabres, and the St. Louis Blues. Holding a score of 1-0, to zero, the Sabres were in the lead with only 4 minutes and 43 seconds left in the first period of the game. Then, it happened. In an attempt to intercept a pass from Sabres defenseman Uwe Krupp, Blues rookie Steve Tuttle collided with Malarchuk and his skate sliced across his neck. The collision caused a 6-inch gash in Malarchuk's throat, partially severing his jugular vein and severing several muscles and tendons in his neck. Malarchuk described it as feeling like a kick to the mask. However, as he felt almost no pain, he did not realize the severity of the injury until he removed his mask and saw the blood spewing out of his neck. Kneeling scared in a sea of blood, Malarchuk then lost his ability to breathe. It was at that point that not knowing how much blood he had lost, he truly thought that he was going to die. Immediately, referees and other players called for help and Jim Pizzutelli, the team's athletic trainer, was the first to reach him. Jim used gauze to apply immense amounts of pressure to Malarchuk's throat, making it impossible for him to breathe and therefore lose more blood. Malarchuk was escorted off of the ice and his team doctor sustained his stable condition until the ambulance came when he was rushed off to Buffalo General Hospital. To better understand the dynamics of this frightening accident, we turn to our animation. When Steve Tuttle's skate blade met Clint's unprotected neck, it cut through the skin and into the best known vein in the human body, the jugular. The jugular's job is to drain blood from the head, brain, face, and neck back to the heart. And any laceration can quickly cause significant blood loss. Not surprisingly, human flesh is no match for the carbon steel blade of a hockey skate. Less than four millimeters wide, the business part of the skate is actually concave, in the shape of a U. So it's not really like a knife so much as it's like a twin blade razor. As the blade makes contact, it slices through all three layers of skin. At Buffalo General Hospital, Malarchuk underwent surgery to repair his severed jugular vein. During the surgery, which lasted for only one and a half hours, the surgeon closed the vein on the sliced side of his neck. They had to repair the severed tendons and muscle as well as stitch up the wound. After the surgery, Malarchuk's physician, Dr. John Booch, offered a prognosis for a full recovery. In total, over 300 stitches were necessary to repair Malarchuk's injuries, and it was estimated that he lost approximately 1.5 liters of blood. Booch said that if the blade had hit only one-eighth of an inch higher on Malarchuk's neck, the skate might as well have been a guillotine. So how close did Clint Malarchuk come to dying? To find out, our scientists create a simple experiment. This plastic container is filled with 10 pints of simulated blood, which is, amazingly, all the blood we have in our bodies. The container is pressurized at 18 PSI, which represents the average amount of blood pressure in our bodies. The idea is to puncture it, to see just how quickly we can lose a critical and fatal amount of blood. While the clock ticks down, we are going to hear from emergency medical physician Seth Lavinger. Are injuries to the external jugular vein common in the emergency room? And how do you treat traumatic injuries of this kind? It's not a common occurrence to see an injury to the external jugular vein. We usually follow the uh, ABCDs, where A stands for airway, B stands for breathing, C stands for circulation and hemorrhage control, D stands for disability, which is basically a set of uh, neurologic uh, function. There's also an E, which stands for exposure. How long does it typically take to recover from an injury of this kind? Wounds reach their maximum strength of healing in about 49 days or 7 weeks. Now, if somebody returns to the ice in one week or seven days is amazing, or you could say a little uh, tricky or dangerous, but he probably did it because he's now for the results. The time it takes for your body to bleed out with a wound like Clint's, 2 minutes and 16 seconds. Despite his unstable condition, Malarchuk was released early from the hospital the next day due to the hospital's inability to handle the overwhelming amount of paparazzi trying to sneak in. Numerous doctors were consulted by both the Buffalo Sabres and the Malarchuk family in order to decide when Malarchuk would be able to join his teammates on the ice again. Some said to wait several weeks. Others said months, and some even advised Malarchuk to retire.
Malarchuk knew that no matter what everybody else said, the final decision was up to him. He could not stand the idea of sitting on the sideline and was not going to let this injury define and possibly end his ice hockey career. Determined to miss as little game time as possible, Malarchuk worked hard to recover quickly and return to the ice only a week after what is known as the most famous NHL injury of all time. We hope that you enjoyed and learned a lot from this segment of the Buzz on Sports Science. See you later.